In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you to our Chrism Mass on this Holy Thursday, the day on which the priesthood was born. I'm delighted to be ga gathered along with you, the people of God from the Diocese of Dromore, and with members of the clergy from all over the diocese who are with us here today. This is a day in which we can pray especially for vocations to the priesthood and to the religious life, of course, and also a deeper sense of vocation for all God's people, for all the baptized. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Sushi pe de preca 
Nationen Nostra. Visen es ad exteram patris, miserere nobis. Tu salus dominus, tu salus altissimus, Jesus. Cum Sancto Spiritu, in gloria Dei Patris. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all those who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. You yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord, ministers of our God, shall you be called. I will give them their recompense faithfully. A lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. sing forever of your love, O Lord. I, I will sing, sing forever of your love, O Lord. I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil anointed him. My hand shall always be with him, and my arm shall make him strong. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My truth and my love shall be with him, by my name his might shall be exalted. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, the rock who saves me. 
I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. A reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father, to him be glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, the one who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty, the Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of eternal glory. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as he usually did. He stood up to read, and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favor. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant, and sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's hard to believe that 
In September, it will be 45 years since Pope St. John Paul II came to Ireland. I was in my final year at school in Derry, and at that stage I was beginning to think seriously about the possibility of a vocation to the priesthood, so I was particularly interested in the Pope's visit. In his address to the priests of Ireland at Maynooth College, Pope John Paul said, to speak of priesthood is to speak of mission, because the pilgrim church is missionary by her very nature. And he went on to reflect on how Irish monks and priests in the 9th and 10th centuries had gone out on mission to rekindle the light of faith in parts of Europe. And interestingly, he mentioned that up until the 13th century, there was even an Irish monastery as far east as Kiev. My brother priests, mission is in our Irish genes. So as we renew our priestly promises today, let's also rekindle the fire of mission in our hearts. We've all been anointed by Holy Chrism at baptism, confirmation, and ordination. And Isaiah today reminds us in that first reading that to be anointed is to be sent. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, he writes. For the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor. Some of you may have seen recently that television program which rather bleakly says that we might be among the last priests in Ireland. I disagree. Although the last 45 years has certainly seen immense change in the church and society, not only in Ireland, but right across the Western world. Back in 1980, whenever I first went to Maynooth, there were around 50 diocesan priests ministering in the parishes of the Dromore Diocese. Today, there is less than a third of that. But this is no fin de siècle moment for priesthood. Rather, it is our time to be a church in mission. Because today, more than ever, the world needs to hear the good news that Christ is alive. Christ is our hope. The opening prayer at the Chrism Mass this morning makes our mission clear. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. The profile of the clergy here in the Diocese of Dromore has evolved hugely in recent years, and we can see that this morning. And we now have priests from many different countries ministering here among us, including three Nigerian priests, two of them from a missionary society. We have two Polish priests. We have a priest from Kerala and in India, and they're all making a very significant contribution to the life of our diocese. Not to mention, of course, our religious priests, including those from the Society of African Missions. An important new development in our diocese here has been the arrival of some priests and deacons from the Archdiocese of Armagh Missionary Seminary. This was set up in Dundalk around 10 years ago, and we're preparing there seminarians from all over the world to serve as priests in Ireland and beyond. You know, of course, Father Carlos and Father Maci and Deacon Francesco who, please God, will be ordained next month. And we're also joined amongst our clergy by four permanent deacons with four more in formation at the moment, and they are greatly helping in the mission of the church here in this place. In a few moments, we will renew our priestly promises, in which we resolve to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God, to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, and to follow Christ, our head and shepherd, not seeking any personal gain, 
but moved only by zeal for souls. My dear brother priests, let's not lose our zeal for souls. Like our ancient predecessors who went to Europe on Peregrinatio Pro Cristo, let us strive with the help of the Holy Spirit to rejuvenate the church here in Ireland and beyond. And we clergy, of course, are not alone in this quest. Pope Francis is currently challenging us to become a synodal church in mission and to realize that our religious and our lay women and men, by virtue of their baptism, are co-responsible with us for the church's mission. Your charisms, your gifts from the Holy Spirit are there in abundance and they need to be identified and formed and called forth and appreciated in the church. The first session of the Synod in Rome last October put it like this, an invaluable fruit of the synodal process so far is a heightened awareness of our identity as the faithful people of God, within which each person is the bearer of a dignity derived from baptism. And each person is called to differentiated co-responsibility for the common mission of evangelization. To put it another way, we are all disciples. We are all called to holiness. And we are all called to be missionaries. The mission of the church involves the entire church with the faithful, both male and female, contributing alongside the religious, the clergy, and the bishops. For that reason, I encourage you, my brother priests, to make your voices heard in the synodal process. Last October, the delegates in Rome said, a synodal church cannot do without the voices of clergy, their experiences, their contribution. And I ask you also, to do what you can to incorporate synodal listening into the life of your parishes and to call forward the gifts of your people so that they can be truly co-responsible with you for the life and pastoral mission of the church. After all, by baptism and confirmation, these, the people of God, along with us, are also anointed with chrism and sent. And we're immensely grateful to the very many lay faithful and religious who are already assisting us in our parishes and dioceses as parish volunteers or workers, as members of our pastoral councils, finance councils and various prayer groups and other initiatives. And many of you are here today. So I want, on behalf of all the clergy here, to thank you, my dear brothers and sisters, and bless you for your vital assistance to us in the mission of the church. We're all especially conscious this Holy Week that we live in a very fragile and troubled world where the ravages of war and violence, poverty and injustice, where we have the displacement of millions of people, where the consequences of climate change are clearly visible to us. But we are all anointed and sent. And together, we are called and gifted to share the good news with a wounded humanity. Or as Isaiah put it, we're anointed and sent to bind up hearts that are broken. Something else that Pope John Paul II said when he spoke to the priests of Ireland in 1979. And I'll finish with this. He said, the work of the Lord cannot be done by lukewarm or half-hearted priests. Let me add to that. Neither can it be done by lukewarm or half-hearted Catholics. He said, the fire of love 
which Christ had for his Father and for his people, must burn in us. Christ, longing to save all people, must consume us. Let that be our prayer, our hope, and our wish on this Holy Thursday. Amen. And I invite the priests present to stand and to renew their priestly promises. Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which, prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination? I am. Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the Head and Shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls. I invite our brothers and sisters in the congregation to stand now. And can I ask you, dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the High Priest so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. Christ hear us. Christ graciously hear us. And pray also for me that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my loneliness and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. Christ hear us, Christ graciously hear us. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead us all, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Can I ask you also today just to pray for vocations to the priesthood, to the religious life, and a deep sense of vocation in all the baptized faithful women and men. Lord, hear us. Lord, I'd like to remember today Dean Artie Byrne, Father Oliver Trainer, and Father Brian White, who've gone to their rest since this time last year. May they and all the deceased priests, religious deacons of our diocese rest in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. I thank God for the gift of the priesthood, personally for me and for all of us here. And I pray God's blessing on two of our priests who are celebrating significant anniversaries of their ordination this year. Two Browns, actually. Father Brian, who's celebrating 40 years of priesthood. And Canon Francis, who's celebrating his Golden Jubilee 50 years this year. God bless you both. I invite you now to sit, and we will have the procession of the oils. As you know, at the Mass of Chrism, we bless the oil of baptism, or catechumens. We bless the oil of the sick, infirmorum. And we also consecrate the sacred chrism. They will be brought now forward in the offertory procession by our deacons.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred mystery through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of his human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacrament as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters. They strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, our retired Bishop John, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls, in the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. And blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously that you accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. 
be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, Artie, Oliver, and Brian, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. We have the blessing of the oil of the sick. O God, Father of all consolation, who willed to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send forth from the heavens, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body so that by your holy blessing everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body, soul and spirit may be freed from all pain, all infirmity and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom through whom you bestow all these gifts. You fill them with life and goodness. You bless them and make them holy. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. Amen. 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 I invite you to stand now and at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching. We dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirits. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nomis, agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Not only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the reception of communion, please follow the guidance of the stewards. We will start for the main aisle, back to front. You process through the center, and then you go through the sides. And then the side aisles, the same, starting from the back to the front, processing to the main aisle, going to the sides. The side aisles will receive communion in their own place.
Let us pray. We beseech you, almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We now bring forward the oil of catechumens, the oil of baptism for blessing. First of all, In the spirit of the prophecy, David 
foreshadowing of things to come. In the last days, all this has been clearly revealed. When every offense is removed through the waters of baptism, the anointing of this boy makes our faces cheerful and serene. You also commanded your servant Moses to make his brother Aaron a priest by pouring this oil upon him after he had been washed in water. Still greater thing this when your son Jesus Christ our Lord insisted that he be washed by John in the waters of the Jordan. You sent the Holy Spirit from on high to the likeness of the God. You declared by the witness of the voice of the Father that you were well pleased in him, your only begotten Son. And you were seen to confer clearly what the prophet David had foretold itself, that Christ would be anointed Therefore, we beseech you, Lord, be pleased to sanctify with your blessing this oil in its richness, and to pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit with the powerful working of your Christ. From his holy name, it has received the name of prison, and with it you have anointed your priests, prophets, kings, and martyrs. May you confirm the prison you have created as a sacred sign of perfect salvation and life for those to be made new in the spiritual waters of life. May those formed into a temple of your majesty by the holiness infused through this anointing, and by the cleansing of the stain of their first birth, be made fragrant with the innocence of a life pleasing to you. May those anointed with royal priestly and prophetic dignity be clothed with the garment of an incorruptible gift in keeping with the sacrament. May this oil be the prison of salvation for those born of water and the Holy Spirit, and may it make them partakers of eternal life and shares of heaven and glory through Christ our Lord. Go forth, the mass is in.